I've been playing Call of Duty for practically my entire life. From the time when I was a little kid back on the PlayStation 2, I was playing Call of Duty 1, 2, and 3, and I would continue to keep playing the next subsequent Call of Duty games that would come out. But the game that I would say I put the most amount of time into was Black Ops 2. You know, a lot of people are going to say that. A lot of people that are still within the COD community, especially the old heads from back in the day, are going to say that Modern Warfare 2 Classic or Black Ops 2 were the greatest Call of Duty games of all time. And I'm a firm believer that Black Ops 2 was indeed the greatest Call of Duty that was ever made. Ever since 2016 with World War II, I kind of had this awakening and realization that the games just weren't going to get any better and that all that Activision was going to do was just try to figure out a way on how to optimize however much money that they can in the quickest way possible. And I believe that they have figured out the best method of doing so and it all started in 2019 with Modern Warfare 2019 with the reboots of the franchise. I sort of reboot the franchise, but mainly the reboot of the Modern Warfare series. And I didn't feel excited for this at all. I knew it was just going to be a cash grab, and that's kind of basically what it ended up turning out to be. As it went on further, I just progressively saw Call of Duty get worse and worse and worse and worse over time, over the next few years afterwards. And it's been going on for a long time now, and I have criticized it over and over and over again. I, I have tried to make as many videos as possible, just trying to get my point across. And I think this is going to be one of the last few times I'm going to be able to do so and try to get it in the way that just makes the most sense to me. With the recent news and information that happened revolving around the H2M mod client that was happening revolving around the remaster of the original Mono Warfare 2, but through the Mono Warfare remastered engine, that had recently gotten taken down by Activision and pretty much the only reason why, or the only reason that we really know of, why they decided to go ahead and send a cease and desist over to the mod team that was working on this project was because they really thought that if this mod had succeeded and was extremely successful it would have impacted the sales for black ops 6 and that really just tr truly shows what their initiative is it's sales numbers for their new games over anything it's optimizing matchmaking and player engagement as much as possible and they don't care about their old games because if you look at the steam charts right now you can go and look at black ops 2 on steam and it's still 60 dollars. it's a 60 dollar price tag but if you didn't know about this ahead of time if you if you just decided to buy the game and not know any information about a lot of previous call of duty games from years and years ago you wouldn't know that the, the fact that a lot of old call of duty games are actually incredibly unsafe to play and the reason why i say that they're unsafe to play is because there are a lot of rats and rces going around with modders going into the games within these old cod titles where they essentially just grab your ip and they will ddos you they'll take your information and they'll post it online and, and dox you and a whole bunch of other stuff and it's incredibly unsafe and if you didn't know about this then you would unwittingly going into these servers and be in the most vulnerable position possible because you didn't know about any of this information. So what mod modders have been trying to do for a long time now is they have been creating these mod clients su such as the Xlats project and Plutonium. And basically what their whole initiative is it's a dedicated group of modders who love Call of Duty, but love the old titles and still want to be able to play them and acknowledge that there are a lot of other fans that also still want to be able to play them, but don't want to run into the fear of potentially getting their information doxed out onto the internet. And that's obviously something that shouldn't be happening. And Activision refuses to do anything about it and still charges their old games at pretty much full price. Some of their titles are still priced at full price, even after a decade since they have long since been released and what do they do they go ahead and they send a cease and desist to get these mod projects out because they don't like the fans to have fun they don't like the fans taking things into their own hands and doing the due diligence and making sure that their players are actually safe because they don't want to do it themselves they don't care enough to be able to fix the problems that are happening in their old games because it doesn't make the money right it doesn't make the money there's no incentive for them to you know fix all these old titles there's no reason because it doesn't have their current monetization systems in play which pretty much is eomm which is engagement optimized matchmaking where they basically will put you into lobbies where you're not doing 
horrible enough to make you want to quit playing the game, but you're also doing good enough to want to keep playing the game. And the way that it does that is that it will put you into a lobby, and depending on your performance within the game, depending on how bad you do, and if you decide to play another match, you'll do really good in the next match because you're playing against players that are a lesser skill of you. But if you're doing too well in a particular match, the game will decide to put you in a match that has players that are significantly better than you, and that will drop you down into the queue of the matchmaking system, and that will put you up against players that are uh, of lesser skill so that way it's more likely that you'll end up doing better in that match and then you'll end up keep wanting to play the game and all this is just so that way they can get players to look at their stores so that way they can go ahead and see what's uh what's in the store and what what bundles they have and look at the battle pass and buy those and that brings up a topic a question of just how shitty their monetization system is because not only do they have skins and bundles that are just completely just ridiculous in the context of, of them being in call of duty that just don't make any fucking sense at all and are absolutely ridiculous and just shows that call of duty doesn't have an identity anymore but they'll even go against the entire identity of what a game is supposed to be an example that i'm going to use is call of duty vanguard and they'll create an entire operator pack where the operator in context is snoop dogg and if you didn't know call of duty vanguard was a game that was set in world war ii and as far as i know to my knowledge from what i from what i can remember about history i don't remember the history books teaching me about snoop dogg running down the beaches of normandy in 1944 world war ii not on my fucking watch you didn't fucked up on that one i don't remember anything like that actually happening but besides like these ridiculous looking operator skins and and operator skins that don't make sense in the, the the timeline of actual fucking history and of course you got like Nicki Minaj skins and that, they just look absolutely fucking ridiculous but it's also the fact that these bundles are insanely overpriced the Nicki Minaj skin and Modern Warfare 2 2022 alone it costs 2400 cod points which if you convert that to dollars that's $24 for just a bundle where you're able to play as a skin of Nicki Minaj, a World War person. Obviously you get more items than just the operator skin, but what you're getting in this bundle is just not worth it. And you're spending real life money, $24 for a bundle that is just not worth getting. And so far this is the worst example that I've seen of a bundle being insanely overpriced. I'm, there, maybe there's another bundle that costs way more, but I found another bundle that's called Gassed Up Weapon Vault. And you get a couple of skins, some stickers, a, a little trinket to put on your gun and some tokens. And it's 3,400 con points. That's $34 for just a little simple skin to put on some of your weapons in the game. And that's it. I don't even think you can put it on a whole bunch of the guns that you actually have within the game. Which in something like, like Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare 3, there's actually quite a bit of guns that exist that you're able to use within the game. But because this is a bundle, you're only specifically buying the skin for whatever the skin was meant to be on. Which is typically the particular weapon that they show to demonstrate what the skin actually looks like. So you're only allowed to put the bundle skin on one particular weapon and you're paying 34 fucking dollars for this. So Activision's monetary system has just gotten significantly worse over time. The lack of identity in recent Call of Duty titles is absolutely fucking ridiculous in comparison to what they used to be before. Their old COD titles are riddled, riddled with hackers and are completely unsafe and they refuse to do anything about it to actually make sure that the players who decide to want to go back are actually safe from potentially getting their information doxxed. But they also take down mod projects that is sole purpose where they gain no monetary value is to make sure that these players don't have to worry about their safety being in jeopardy. That's the only reason why any of these mod projects exist, and yet Activision decides that they're going to go ahead and send a cease and desist, and this is confirmed by one of the lead devs on the mod team for this Mono Warfare 2 Remastered project, that the reason why they sent a cease and desist in the first place was because they were worried about the impact that it would have on Black Ops 6 sales. And that's the only reason why they sent this in the first place, because they thought and were worried that it was going to end up being way too successful more than they were expecting it to be. And it's ridiculous because the main reason why something like this even fucking exists in the first place is so that way players don't have to worry about their safety and their online security being in jeopardy. 
It's the only reason why I exist. That's the number one reason, but obviously there are a few other reasons that you can name off, and it's pretty simple. A lot of players have been asking for Modern Warfare 2 to get remastered for a very, very long time after they had remastered the original COD 4 title from back in 2007, and they had already remastered the campaign for Modern Warfare 2. They refused to remaster the multiplayer for that game because they were worried that players weren't going to play the new title, which I don't remember which title it was specifically. I think it might have been either Cold War or Vanguard. They they were worried that players weren't going to play either Cold War or Vanguard. They were worried that players were going to instead not play the new titles, but play this remaster of an old title from over a fucking decade ago. And that's the only reason why they didn't remaster it, despite fans having asked for this for a very, very long time. All this though, all this to say, all the reasons I have already listed off as some of the reasons why you shouldn't be supporting this company anymore by not buying bundles, buying skins, buying the battle pass, and continuing to keep playing this game, and not even playing the game at all. One of the main reasons why I say that you should not support this company at all and stop buying their fucking games that they publish, mainly Call of Duty, because that's the one of the main titles that they make the most amount of money with, is because of the sexual assault and sexual harassment claims that happened a few years ago. If you didn't know, in 2020 and 2021, it was kind of a new era of Gamergate where it was during the Me Too era and a lot of women in a lot of different places were coming around and talking about their stories about sexual harassment and workplace environments. And Activision was one of the places that actually got hit with a lot of allegations about sexual harassment in the workplace environment. A lot of women came forward with a lot of stories and the stories sound absolutely horrible because the workplace environment and the Activision offices was basically described that of a frat house with mainly predominantly male employees not actually doing the work at all. They were mainly playing video games and drinking a copious amount of alcohol and throwing all their workload onto the women. And not only were they not just not doing their work and loading that onto the women in the studios, but they also were continuously harassing them at any given point possible and even joking about sexual assault many a times this, this was happening and there was also another story in which there was a woman that had took in her own life because of the fact that there was a company party at one point i forget when it was specifically but there was a woman who was working the activision blizzard and when she was at a at a state out of the country uh, at a company retreat actually it was she had took in her own life and the fact that this happened, and the fact that this was going on, all while Bobby Kotick, fucking goddamn Bobby Kotick, was CEO of the company. And he knew all of this, by the way. This isn't information that he didn't know about, and it, it was swept under the rug, and it went underneath his, over, over his head, and all this other fucking shit it was right underneath his nose. No, he knew about all of this. HR knew about all this information about sexual harassment in the workplace and the fact that this woman was continuously harassed and was in this sexual relationship for, with another employee, another male employee, in which she, the only reason why she was in this relationship anyways that she didn't even want to be in was to stay in good standings with the company so that way she can not lose her fucking job, pretty much. And what happened? The fucking douchebag that was working there shared around naked pictures of her and said all, said and would do all this other stuff with her. And she took her own life. And the fact that Call of Duty fans heard about this and knew about this and continued to know about this and continued to, continued to just keep buying their new titles. When they had employees do weird shit like stealing breast milk and continuous sexual harassment... Uh, enough to the point where one woman couldn't handle it anymore and took her own life. It's just appalling to me. All the while, when all this is happening, right, everything that I had already listed off before, including the sexual harassment stuff, player counts are always continuously dropping. I, I check Steam charts every now and then. I'm checking the Steam numbers of what's going on in, like, the recent title for Call of Duty, and it's always going down more and more and more and more and more players are starting to stop playing the game and of course obviously this is only one st statistic we obviously don't know the numbers of the, the console players in context because activision refuses to give us the numbers in context to how many c console players are playing what does one statistic enough if it's enough that pc players are wanting to stop playing the game then it should say enough that there are probably quite enough 
console players that are also not playing the game. And I know that this is enough for Activision to be able to listen to the community for once and actually maybe pay attention to what the community might actually want. Because just this year alone, just the past couple of years of Modern Warfare 2 2022 and Modern Warfare 3 2023, the player counts have been going down and they've been continuously keep going down. More and more players are starting are starting to stop playing the game. They're not buying bundles. They're not buying the battle pass. And what do you think ended up happening a few months ago when they decided to go ahead and start announce Black Ops 6? They started announcing a whole bunch of stuff that actually seemed kind of exciting, like the return of prestige mode and the return of you know, fan favorite maps and this new omnidirectional movement. It's a new movement system that players can now test out. And this whole branching campaign that continues off of the last Black Ops game that they had released before. And then also the return of round based zombies. So that's another side of the community that they could potentially bring back and get them to buy their new COD so that way they can advertise more bundles and more battle passes and more skins and just it's just another way of trying to brainwash the community to buy another title that is just gonna end up doing the same thing that they had already been doing for years and years on end. They don't care. Activision doesn't care about the players. They don't care about whether or not players are actually enjoying the game that they're releasing. They barely even give a shit about the people that they employ to work at their studios. It's ridiculous how this continues to keep happening year after year. I see this continuously, year after year, of fans complaining about their new recent COD, how this, this, and this is having a problem, the games are always not working properly, and there's always some new bug and some new glitch, and people are like losing their stats, and they're losing their accounts, and all this shit's getting deleted, and all this fucking bullshit is happening, but people are still wanting to buy the new COD anyways. They still buy it because they're brainwashed into this system and this mindset that they think that the next COD is going to end up reviving the franchise, when the franchise has been long dead for over 10 years, the last game that was really worth playing was Black Ops 3 at most, and that's because the game actually wasn't really all that bad. It was an advanced movement game, but it actually wasn't bad. The gunplay was good, the multiplayer was fun, even though it had trash microtransactions with the supply drops. The zombies was good though, the campaign sucked, but, but at best, the game was still fun to play. I still have fond memories of playing that game with my friends back on the PlayStation 4, and just having a good time. And before Black Ops 3, for me it was Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 was the peak of the franchise. And since then, all it's ever really been is just going down a constant downward hill. Where players are just st stuck in this mindset that, ah, oh, well, they'll get us next time, right? They'll, they'll, they'll get it right the next time. But they're never going to get it right the next time. It's always going to continuously to keep getting worse and worse and worse. The player accounts is always going to keep dropping and dropping and dropping. But it won't matter because there's always going to be enough players to continue to keep buying these bundles. And I think if we do our due diligence and let people know this information, right? Let them know why they shouldn't be playing these new titles, right? Because of the fact that they don't take, they take care of their old titles, the fact that they're releasing overpriced bundles and skins and and battle passes and stuff and taking down fan projects that only serve to you know help the community rather than hinder them and the workplace environment that they had been allowing to happen for multiple multiple years for an insanely long time if we can just let people know about this information and gather around together as a community we could potentially create a change in activision blizzard and make them realize what it is that they have to do. The only way that we can do it is by spreading the word, re negatively reviewing new COD titles, and let people know through reviews and through all this information that is super important why they shouldn't buy these titles. And COD fans, I know like it sucks, right? But I think the only way to really make a difference is that you just don't buy the next game, right? And if you're gonna buy the next game, don't buy bundles. Don't buy the battle pass. I, like I understand that there are COD content creators who are gonna need to make content, and in that in that regard. I kind of understand it, right? Because the content that they release in terms of like bundles and skins and battle passes and events, you need to be able to turn something into content. So I know that I can't really stop you. And I understand why a lot of content creators, especially a lot of COD content creators, have been saying like, it doesn't matter, it's not gonna make a difference because it's not gonna make a difference for you because you're gonna have to go ahead and experience it anyways. You're gonna have to go ahead and spend money on the battle, the battle passes and the bundles anyways because you need something to be able to turn into content. Even though the content that you're making isn't fun for people to watch viewership constantly goes down as well as player numbers on steam and potentially console as well people don't enjoy watching the new games anymore 
because they're not fun to watch because they're not fun to play and it's just so frustrating and i've been saying this for so long and i'm just so over it i just wish that fans would finally realize what we need to do as a unit as as a community but it'll, i don't think it'll ever happen and i think i might have said this in like the previous video that i made in regards to like call of duty and activision blizzard but just i'm just constantly stuck in this infinite loop of feeling like i'm the only one that really knows activision for what they are and i'm the one trying to constantly preach this information that is super important that people need to know and they just ignore what it is that i have to say because they choose to live in blissful ignorance and i'm here to say that you shouldn't be living in blissful ignorance you need to acknowledge what's going on and put a stop to this shitty business practices that they're constantly getting away with and i refuse to support it i refuse to support any of this any further and i haven't for almost 10 years. The last Call of Duty game that I bought was World War II back in 2016, and it's been eight, almost nine years. Well, actually, almost like eight years, most likely. Uh, and I haven't looked back. So anyways, that's pretty much it. <sighs> pretty long-winded. I kind of went on for a lot longer than I was anticipating. Uh, I'm just super passionate about this topic because at one point I was super passionate about Call of Duty. I want Call of Duty to return back to what made it so special but i've just accepted at this point that it's never going to happen i think the sooner that other players figure this out i think the more that we can try to make a difference in the franchise and get someone to notice get get leadership to change what it is that they're actually what to actually what they're actually doing and change leadership in general right because the current leadership that they have at activision is completely against anything community driven and anything that benefits the community in any way because they don't care about the players they only care about profit. And as Blame Truth would say in his videos, they'll never sell you a game so good that you won't buy next year's title. They'll never do it. They'll never sell you a game that's so good that you aren't willing to buy the next year's title. Because we already know they're never going to do a two-year cycle with a game. They already said that they were going to do that with Mono Warfare 2022, but they didn't. They lied. They took it back. And they just have been doing the yearly release cycle and constantly pressuring their studios to do shit that they don't want to do. Currently, I think Modern Warfare 4 is in development. And there's like a lot of... There's a lot of people on the team that are currently like really unhappy with what they're having to do with the narrative and the mechanics. And Activision is just constantly like pressuring them into doing what they're being told to do. Anyways, uh, that's it. I don't have much else to say about the topic any further. If something happens in the future and something changes, maybe I'll talk about it. But just... Since this has been going on over the past couple of days, I just felt like I had to get my thoughts out there because it's just so frustrating to see. And I, I wish things would change, but they're most likely not going to. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace. Yeah.